بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله So alhamdulillah last week we spoke about we spoke about the spiritual anatomy of the human being from our inner construct of which Allah Ta'ala tells us about in the Quran the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about in the hadith from the aspects and the faculties of our heart our nafs our qalb our ruh and we spoke about this why because Number one, revelation tells us of this. Number two, it's important in understanding this, how we can change ourselves, right? Because these are the parts of ourselves that we're pinpointing in Ramadan so that we can change ourselves. Allah Ta'ala in the Quran says, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْسِرُونَ And look into yourselves. Why don't you see? Look into yourselves. So we are commanded to do so. The ulama, right? This is just, you know, recap of why we studied what we studied and what we spoke about last week. The ulama have a statement which is quite frequently uh, quoted, which is, مَنْ عَرَفَ نَفْسَهُ فَقَدْ عَرَفَ رَبَّهُ Imam Ghazali rahimahullah and others mention it, that one who understands himself, he acknowledges himself, he learns about himself, then he will acknowledge Allah Ta'ala. He will learn about his Lord. So there's a great connection there. And this is why we speak about this. We're going to branch off of some of what we spoke about last week, but to speak more into detail about just in specifically one of the faculties, which is the qalb, the heart. Now to briefly recap, we mentioned four last week. One is the nafs, which is human inclination, behavioral inclination, so desires as well as aggressions, they come from the nafs. The other was the ruh, which is the human life force, right? The human life force and we, it's, it's more of a heavenly and an illuminated part of us which desires to be with Allah Ta'ala and desires to be with that which is illuminated. And then there is the aqal which is our intellect, our cognition. And that is a part of the qalb which is the heart. And we mentioned that the heart was the receptacle, the locust of the human being. So all of the other things will reflect upon the heart. So the nafs reflects upon the heart, the ruh reflects upon the heart, the aql reflects upon the heart. The heart is where all the effect takes place. Then the heart affects the human being. So your emotions, your decisions, right? your reasoning, your understanding, uh, this is all affected by the, uh, by the heart. This is directly affected by the heart. And so we mentioned last week that there's a battle between these different faculties within the heart. Now the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when speaking about the heart, he said that Allah inna fil jasadi la mudra idha saluhat saluh al jasadu kullu. We mentioned the hadith last week as well. That surely in the body there is a limb, and that limb, if it is rectified, if it is pure, if it is on the the right path, then the rest of the body will follow. It is from this that the ulama have gathered this understanding that our body is like the civilians to a king. The king is the heart. So the heart is the leader, the heart is the king. The body, the nafs, the aql, everything else, they fall in obedience to the heart. They fall in obedience to the heart. And so the Messenger of Allah Wasallam said that if this part of the body is then corrupted, then the rest of the body will follow it in corruption. Right? And he said, Allah wahil qalb, that surely this part is the heart. Now where is the heart? Because we're, we're not speaking about the physical heart. We're not speaking about the heart that pumps blood nor can you find it. Right? We're speaking about the heart which we mentioned last week. It is the one who has the degree of prophecy. The one who holds revelation can speak about it. No, one, no other person can speak about it. Uh, only Allah Ta'ala and whom He opens His knowledge upon can speak about this heart. What is this heart? The ulama mentioned that looking at the revelation which we have, if we were to locate where this intangible and metaphysical heart is, then it is in the Al-Qalb Al-Sanubari. So this pumping heart that we have, a part of it is a part that we can't see, but it is there. It receives effect. It's a receptacle. It receives effect. And it has a, a way of sensing, just like the five senses have a way of sensing, right? And we'll mention this later on, that you know each sense is important to itself, right? So if you have something you want to smell, you're not going to put it in front of your eye. You're going to put it in front of your nose. The same way the heart has a way that it senses, and what it senses and how it senses. 
So the qalb, the heart, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in a hadith by Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he mentions it, is of four types. And he said that one is al qalbul ajrat. There's one that is, it's pure. It's pure and it yuzhir, it, light, it, it illuminates. It illuminates. And that is the heart of the believer. That is the heart of the believer. So the idea that we get is that the heart reflects what? Light. What is that light? The nur which Allah Ta'ala sends upon it. And that's also a part of what we're going to speak about, which is the Quran. And what is, now obviously the month of Ramadan, Quran, we all speak about it. But what is the main connection between Quran and the heart? And why is the, the, the Quran so important to the heart? So the heart is of the first type, the Messenger of Allah said that it uh, shines, it illuminates. The second, the second is one that it is backwards, right? It's backwards. That's the heart of the munafiq. That's the heart of the munafiq. And there's one that is dark and it's blackened. And that is the heart of the disbeliever, right? And then there's a fourth, which is qalb mushaf, musfah. It's a heart which has two sides. That's the heart which is still battling between iman and nifaq. So it's gaining the light of iman, but it's still battling the darkness of nifaq. So there's obedience, but there's still disobedience. So it still hasn't reached what Allah Ta'ala speaks of as al qalbu salim Allah Ta'ala said in the Qur'an that when speaking on the day of resurrection, that nothing will benefit. La malun wa la banun, nor your wealth, nor your progeny. Except illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim. Except the one who com comes to Allah Ta'ala with a tranquil heart, a pure heart. Qalb salim. So salim or salama is the opposite of something being harmed, right? It's something which is safe, something which is healthy, right? It's the opposite of saqim. We know Ibrahim والسلام, what did he say when the people went out to do their idolatry? He said what? Inni saqim. I am sick, which was not referring to physical sickness. It was referring to sickness of the heart. That my heart is sick of shirk. Huh? So these, these are states of the heart. And the ulama, they speak about this in light of the Quran and the hadith. Now, in specific, what is the relation of the Qur'an to the heart? And why is the Qur'an so important to the heart? We know that there are different forms of life which Allah Ta'ala gives. Okay? So there's different forms of life. There is life which things exist and they develop, but they don't necessarily have a ruh. So you have trees, you have these, you know, these physical beings, they don't have arwah, they don't have souls. Then you have you have the human being, right? Or beings like the human being. That they have a ruh, right? They have a body, right? So like trees, they have a body. Plants have bodies, but they don't have a ruh. Humans, animals, they have a ruh. They have a ruh, they have a soul, okay? So Allah Ta'ala gives a soul, a life force. And so the body and the soul comes together. The connection between it is very special. When that connection is dismantled, then that's when you have death. When there's the, the connection is severed in a way, then that's where you have death. Every night, why is sleep called the sister of death? It's similar to death. Why? Because every night the ruh wants to escape. And the ruh escapes. Ali radiallahu anhu mentions that the, the ruh escapes at night. right? And it tries to be in the presence of Allah Ta'ala. So this, there's a special connection between the ruh and the body. Then you have life. Then you have another form of life, which is it gives life to other beings. It gives life to other beings. So it's a, it's a ruh, it's a soul which nurtures and gives life to other beings. That's like the example of the Qur'an. So it is a ruh. How do we establish that it is its own life form? Because Allah Ta'ala said, وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا Allah Ta'ala said, and we reveal to you from our command, a soul, a ruh. So he named the Qur'an ruh. So it's its own life form. And this is an understanding that we want to gain. The ulama carry this understanding as well. The Qur'an is its own world, it's its own life form, it gives life, right? It's its own being. The Qur'an is its own independent being. So the Qur'an then, it gives life. Huh? It gives life and it gives life to the heart. So you have these, because you have these different forms of arwah, of life forces, right? The arwah give life. So because of that, you have different forms of life then. Right? So the human body has its own form of life, but the human soul has its own form of life. Right? The human body will die and it will decay, but the human 
ruh and the soul will live. Right? The human body is nurtured by food, but the human soul is nurtured by what? By light, by, which Allah Ta'ala sheds upon the soul, by the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala, by, by, by other things, right? by intangible things, things that you can't see. So this is a, a, a partial reason of why you, you have uh, 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 this connection between specifically the Qur'an and the, and the, and the Ruh. So things give life to other things. Allah Ta'ala, Al-Awwal Wal-Akhir, gave existence to everything else. else right? So you have levels of existence, levels of life. Right? Allah Ta'ala being on top of everything. So we categorize the existence of God to be its own, it's separate. Right? And there's nothing like the existence of God. Our existence is different. The existence of God is different. So that's its own category. Then you have an existence of a world which you don't see. Right? So you have Alamul Malakut, Alamul Amr, right? These different realms, the realm, world of the angels, things you can't see, right? This all comes under the category of what you can't see. Then you have the physical world. You have the physical world. And so the life forces in each of these realms then, they change. So because the life force of the Ruh is an unseen life force, it, it desires a type of nurturing which is also comes from the unseen. And that comes from Allah Ta'ala. So Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an, you know, in different places, for example, we mentioned the ayah that we reveal to you a soul, it gives life, right? Allah Ta'ala says that we send the messengers and we send them with ruh. Again, the ruh is being stated and it's, and it's mentioned over there. Now, how does the Qur'an descend? This is also very important. Allah Ta'ala, right, it's His speech, it's His word. Right? It's His word. And the word of Allah Ta'ala, right, it descends to Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam is very special also because his existence is also very prime. His life form is also very special, very different. How do we know this? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasalam told us that when Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam descended right at the time of Musa alayhi salam and Samiri saw him upon, the, upon the, uh, his animal and whenever he landed on a place of the ground that, that, that part of the ground became green and it gained life. Right? Allah Ta'ala named him for this reason also Ruh. Right? Also named him life. Right? So, for, so, so he, he gives again life. He gives off life by the will of Allah Ta'ala. So what does he do? He carries the Qur'an. Right? He carries the Qur'an. Then he gives it to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu He gives it to the Prophet Sallallahu and this chain is very important because then the Prophet Sallallahu receives it directly and where does he receive it again? Not by necessarily directly first by the tongue or by paper. Allah Ta'ala says, Ala qalbika, upon your heart. So the Qur'an descends from Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasalam to the heart of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so each of these stages then they in their own way give their own form of life. So Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam passes it on to the Messenger and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam passes it on to the rest of the Ummah. This is why in a hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he would make dua and he would say, O oh, the Rabb of Jibreel, O oh, the Rabb of Mikail, O oh, the Rabb of Israfil, and O oh, the Rabb of Muhammad, protect me from the fire. Why did he mention, the commentators mentioned, why did he mention these four things, including himself, four beings? Because Jibreel, right, he gives life. What is the life that he gives? Revelation. He comes down with the wahi, uh, with the revelation, which again, it's its own form of life. Mikai, right, he is the angel which has been commanded to uh, navigate, the, the, uh, to watch the clouds. Right? They drop water. That's another form of life that is given to the earth. Israfil, he will blow the trumpet. Right? The trumpet, what? When it's blown, then all the arwah, which are separate from their bodies, will return and give life to the bodies. And that's how Qiyamah will take place. Muhammad Sallallahu also gives life, right, as well. What is the form of life that he gives? When he passes on the message, right, and that reflects onto the hearts of the believers. So then that gives life to the hearts of the believers. Right? And that's that chain of life, of, of life form which, which comes. Allah Ta'ala, when He speaks of the Qur'an, He speaks of it as water. And He speaks of the hearts as well as awdiyah. The hearts are valleys, right. And so, فَسَالَتْ أَوْدِيَةٌ بِقَدَرِهَا In the ayat it mentions, right? So, so the, 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 those valleys which are pure, the water will flow and the, the, they will carry the water. Those valleys which are impure, referring to an impure heart, 
then they'll have difficulty carrying the message. They'll have difficulty carrying that. Because right? the, the Messenger of Allah in another hadith Ali narrates that Allah inna lillahi aniya that Allah Ta'ala has containers. What are those containers on the earth? They are qulubu ibadihi salihin, the hearts of his righteous servants. So the heart, what the, it has to contain. It has to contain something. If it contains filth, then it cannot contain purity. If it contains purity, then it cannot contain filth. Right? So th where does the Quran come then? It comes on to the, it comes on to the heart. Now, as we were mentioning before, that uh, 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 the idea that the Quran is sustenance in life for the heart. Just like how the earth and, and, and this material is sustenance for the body. This is an idea which the ulama present. There's a book also written by one of the scholars of India in which he proves this theory. And so he mentions, right? He mentions in there that Allah Ta'ala says in various ayat in the Quran that we created the earth for you. وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضِ right? we, we created the earth for you. You nurture yourself by the earth. Right? And then he, he goes into logically understanding this and explaining this as well. You take the human being, right? you take the human being, he has amazing powers. The human being thinks that he or she is very capable. But what if you made this human being alone? The human being that can see, if light is taken away from it, then there's no difference between a blind person and that person. If he doesn't have light, he can't see. The human being, he hears, Allah Ta'ala created a system of vibrations or how, however that system is and he hears what if Allah Ta'ala took away that system so the human alone cannot do anything the human alone cannot do anything it's because of this world that Allah Ta'ala created and then Allah Ta'ala you know he, he, he reveals upon he, he opens doors of knowledge right so just how you understand the world then in comparison you understand the Quran that's the comparison that I want you to take right now that the world and the Quran are very similar so, so this human being travels the world, the human being opens the doors of you know, scientific discovery, etc. This all happens. The human being you know, travels the world, he takes benefit from the world. The, the world nurtures him and he, works, he nurtures the world. And he needs the world, right? So likewise, the Qur'an is like that for the heart. right? So, so just how the human being needs everything in this world and that the human being without this world cannot live, the same way the heart cannot live without the Qur'an. This is the idea. The same way, the heart cannot live without the Qur'an. And so, Allah Ta'ala speaks of people who don't accept the message, right? Disbelievers, that they are like people who are like dead. They are like dead, they're living, but there's a part of them that is dead. They're living, but the other part which needs to be nurtured, that's not alive. Why? Because the, mes the message hasn't come through. Right? The message hasn't come through there. Right? So the life of the hearts is with the Qur'an. The life of the hearts is with the Qur'an. And just how Allah Ta'ala beautifies the earth, He beautifies the earth, and you know, human beings, they cultivate it. With time, they extract from it, which human beings never extracted before, right? Human beings, from the time of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, till now, and they, you know, they think that at one point of time, that, you know, Allah's, what He has stored within this world will end, but it never ends, right? If there are people who are di dying of hunger, even that is not because Allah Ta'ala has, you know, there's a, there's a shortage of food, but it's because the people navigating the food are being unjust. So the means are always there. The Qur'an is there as well. Why aren't people nurturing themselves with it? Not because of the shortage of the, of the, of the, of the material, of the supply. The supply is there. What the heart needs is there. But the human being isn't taking from it. The human being isn't taking from it. So Allah Ta'ala beautifies the earth, right? And with time, the, the human beings cultivate it in ways that people before it never cultivated it. The same is the Qur'an. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شفاء. That with time, as time goes, no matter what sickness is it, is it that comes upon the heart, heart, right? You know, nowadays we speak about a sickness of atheism and a type of atheism which the world may have never seen before. But even for that, no matter what sickness it is, Allah Ta'ala said that the cure is always continuously being sent down. Right? So the same way the earth continuously gives life and sustains the human being, the Qur'an will continuously sustain the human being as long as he or she turns to it. So as long as the human being turns to the Qur'an, then Allah Ta'ala will continue to sustain that. We know that Allah Ta'ala, and I'll end with this point, we know that Allah Ta'ala 
How does he create? Allah Ta'ala told us a bit of how he creates. Right? This goes back to the, again the idea of life. That the Quran is life. Allah Ta'ala, how does he create his kalam? He speaks. He says what? Yakun fayakun. Right? The kun is his kalima, his word. That word is the intermediary between him and the creation. So that word, you know, in the ulama, they explain this in detail. That word of Allah Ta'ala gives... It gives existence, it gives life. The, the universe you see was created by Kun. And so the Quran is what? It's also the Kalam of Allah. It's also the Word of Allah. If the Kun of Allah Ta'ala can give life to everything you see, then just imagine what the Quran will do when it comes into the heart of the believer. How much life will it give to the believer? How much life will it give to the human being? Right? If everything you see came by the Word of Allah Ta'ala, and this is what Aisha radiallahu anha said, that if you want to see the complete human being, if you want to see the walking Qur'an, then you see the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He embedded within him the word, the kalam of Allah Ta'ala. So in the, the ulama, they will mention this very beautifully, that this is why looking at the Messenger, looking at the Messenger for the Sahaba was like looking at the Mus'haf. It was like, it was like looking at the Qur'an. Because he embedded within him this, he, within him appeared and manifested the attribute of the speech of Allah Ta'ala which gives life to everything, right? And so this is a very important part of uh, connection to which we had last week, which is we have these faculties within ourselves. We have the heart. How do we cultivate this heart which chains its condition goes up and down, right? How do we purify it? How do we shed light on it? Allah Ta'ala called the, the Quran Nur Mubin, right? It's a clear light, right? So that light, if we want it to reflect upon the heart, then we have to read the Quran. We have to understand the Quran. We have to study the Quran. And this is how we'll bring change to our life. Right? This is why Qur'an is in the month of Ramadan and Ramadan is the place of change. It's where we change. So inshallah, may Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to do this. May Allah Ta'ala give us understanding of this capability to practice. Inshallah, next week we'll also have talk. Inshallah, next week we'll be more specific on Laylatul Qadr and we'll try to go into detail with that. Inshallah, may Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. Jazakumullah khairan.